Hey y'all, farmer Dre back at it. Today, it's another overcast day here on the farm. It's finally fall. We actually got our first frost on Saturday morning. It didn't do too bad, it just kind of wilted the tomato plants. So most of the tomato plants, the tops of them are pretty much done for. But overall, it's the falls here. The weather feels great. I believe it's about 54 degrees today. And you know, it's, I wish the sun would be shining today, but it is what it is, we can't. I can't control the weather and that's the bottom line. But today we're actually standing out here in the strawberries and I'm gonna go ahead and run the irrigation. The strawberry plants have been growing amazingly and I've been irrigating them every week, putting on that, putting on that inch of water every Monday. And um, I'm gonna kind of give you guys a strawberry update, but I'm actually gonna show you guys our complete irrigation system that we are using for the strawberries. So you guys stay tuned to the end of the video. So I was actually using a different style of hose to irrigate them. But we're using the, the, that hose in the greenhouse right now. And my brother Val was cleaning up the end of his property the other day and he found this long hose. It's about a 150 foot hose. And the only downside of it is that the last 10 feet is cracked here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this up real quick and then turn it on. And um, I'm gonna show you guys our fertilizer injector and our filter and all that good stuff. But first, I gotta fix this sucker up. Very, very simple here. I'm just gonna get our... Uh, my dad hates when I use this tool. This is a wire cutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up here. And the reason I use this, even for the drip irrigation, is it makes a pretty clean cup. Throughout the hole there. And I'm gonna use a female adapter because our, our filter and the fertilizer injector, they're made to use a female adapter. So I, I have an adapter inside of the warehouse there, but I figured that if I'm gonna go ahead and fix up this hose here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a female adapter on both ends of the hose, so it's gonna be a little weird if someone else tries to use this, but I'm gonna tell them it's for a good cause. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the, that in there, and you guys know how this works. It's not nothing too complicated here, and then get our screwdriver. I should have grabbed a, uh, like my screwdriver here, works pretty good. Fancy, fancy, fancy stuff here. I, you know, it's it was here in our folder. And I was not going to go to the end of the shop to fix it up. So, I'm go ahead and put it up there like that. Tighten it up all nice and snug there. And there we have it. So this is our filter here, and I'm going to explain this in a little bit. But whenever you run a uh, fertilizer or any kind of you know nutrients inside the filter there, you want to uh, turn on the irrigation there for about 30 minutes or so, so the water could be full. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this to the filter here and turn on the irrigation. And then I will um, get the fertilizer and the fertilizer injector. And the goal is for that, whenever you put on the fertilizer inject, whenever you put on any kind of fertilizer, especially on strawberry cereal, you want to put down seven pounds of actual nitrogen to the acre. So we got about a three quarter acre here. So I'm going to put on uh, about five pounds of, um, of fertilizer from nitrogen itself. And then we're going to go ahead and um, pump it in there. But now I got to go turn on the irrigation, the hydrant. Turn on the hose, let it run for about half an hour or so, and then I'll be back. And as you guys can see here, the ground is still pretty moist and wet because we've, in the last week, we've got over four inches of rain. And you guys are probably asking me, hey, why are you guys, why are you turning on the irrigation if there's already plenty of water? So there's plenty of moisture, but I got to supply the nutrients there for the, for the strawberry plants. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and put the nutrients. So once the fertilizer injector is done pumping it, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And that's that because I don't need to water them because they've got plenty of uh, water through them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the hydrant here and uh, we'll get to it. Water turned on now. Maybe something wrong with this hose or something. These planes, that hose was a piece of junk. It leaked probably 100 in 100 places. And now I got to gotta go get to the greenhouse. And pick up that one I said I wasn't going to use, but now I need it because other than a piece of junk. So I'm going to run to the greenhouse real quick, come back and connect it and turn on the irrigation. So now we will see how this is running frustrating stuff there we go that's all supposed to be working so i turn this off here perfect running the water so now since the water is running and uh 
I'm going to let it run here for about 30 minutes or so like I mentioned. And now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the drip irrigation and how exactly it works. Alrighty, so that's the hose I just connected right there. And that's the filter. So this is called the header line. And the header line is what connects all of the rows together. And some of the big commercial strawberry guys, they use a bigger hose. But since I only have 10,000 feet, this will do plenty. It's a three-quarter inch header line. And for every header, we have a small tool that pokes a hole in there. And then we put the valve so I could be able to turn it on and off whenever I want. And see, as you guys can see here, that the, the water's still filling up there. And if I don't want the water there, I just turn it off and then turn it back on. It's a pretty simple process. And uh, we just do that for every single row here. And make sure that... Uh, the valves I want on and since we we don't have as big as of a um fix this one real quick as so we don't have that big a of um a pressure that comes in from the, the small well house over there I'm only irrigating about half of them at once so I'm doing um eight rows on this side nine rows on this side and eight rows on this side because these are the long rows these are the rows over here that are um 340 foot and these are the shorter rows because the driveway down there hits it off so I'm doing half half at once so this half and then that half and then we'll do the ear the fertilizer for both for both sides so the irrigation is very simple so you have a valve at every row and then you have a end cap here to kind of clean it off so this is a cap here at the end that if you ever want to check if there's water here or anything any mess in there you just open this up just like never mind can't open it up it's very it's just a screw there on top comes out and then you could uh Open it up and then the, all you flush all the water out of there. And then the strawberries, we'll head over to the end and then we'll get into uh, talking what we do at the end there. Walking to the end here, you guys can see how much these strawberry plants have grown. Someone threw a raw, rotten apple from there. So, as you guys can see here, the guy, Bill McNiff, if you guys watched my previous videos, you guys know that he said by the time you throw the row covers on, you like to see, you know, five to six true leaves. So we got one, two, three, four. Maybe five, the fifth one's coming in through there. So that's what you want to see. So we're doing we're doing really good in good shape here before the frost comes. Or not before the frost, before we gotta throw the row covers on. And as you can see here, some plants are doing better than others. But overall, these plants are doing really good. And you got that crown deeply in there, and it's so far so good on these strawberry plants. So walking along through here, this is what you don't want to see. This is deer damage. I'm pretty sure the deer or something came through and ate all the leaves. Man, oh man, it's the first time I was hoping we wouldn't have this problem. But it's just on two plants here, maybe three. And some plants do better than others. Some plants are a lot more vigorous. So, yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of deer damage over here. Oh, wow. We got a lot of deer damage now. Look at that. Got to come through and scout these. Make sure no more deer get on here. I'm just amazed how big some of these plants have gotten already. As you see here, that's one crown. And there's, I don't know how many leaves in there. That is some impressive stuff ever since we planted them. Wow, what is this? Mullet or something? This is why it's good to come through and inspect your plants every day. I've been coming out here as much as I can between school and this. So now back to the irrigation. Here at the end of the row, this is what we do. So initially you do, this is the this row is on, so as you guys can see here, it's nice and solid. So what you want to do, here's a piece of drip tape, is you want to roll up the drip tape this is all dirty but roll it three times up and then you shove another piece of drip tape on top of here the slide on top and then it holds nice together then it crimps it down enough so this is what i had to do every single row and this is nice because if you don't want if there's any mess or anything in the drip tape you just pull this off right here like this one right here pull that off and then clean it out and then put it back together one thing you do not want to do is to crimp it off or to make a knot because then you cannot clear the drip tape from uh, you cannot you know flush it out if you ever need to, so that's one important thing whenever you do put the drip tape is to do what I just did there. And one thing you got to do, keep in mind with the irrigation whenever you're running, is to um, walk through the rows and see if there's any leaks or if any mice or anything ate up the drip tape. And I'm hearing some stuff over there. Maybe that's just some air through there, but it's uh so far so good. Let it run, and then we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, hit the fertilizer so having cloudy days does not benefit us at all especially this time of year you want the, the nice sunshine sun coming down so you can actually get some um, vegetative growth in here 
but you know like I mentioned earlier on we cannot control the weather so we're hoping for some sunshine to get these growing nicely even though they are growing nicely I want to see some more out of them but we'll just hit them hard with some fertilizer and hopefully that helps out some more but overall I'm not complaining they're actually looking very good and the ones we planted a few days earlier for some reason they're doing a lot better than the ones we planted uh, the late the last ones we planted so I'm not exactly sure what's going on here but we'll hit up that fertilizer and get them going Alrighty, so don't get me wrong, this is a little redneck, but it gets the job done. So yeah, here I put this fertilizer injector, which you can find this on Amazon. I'm actually going to put a link down in the description box below. Go ahead and check it out, and you guys could purchase it. It's $19, I believe, and um, it just sucks in the, the fertilizer here. So just see, I pulled it out of there, out of the water there, and you put it back in. And uh, it sucks in there nicely, so it's 19 bucks off Amazon. Go ahead and uh, if you guys want the exact one, click the link down in the description. But overall, it gets the job done. I know there's more efficient ways how to do it, but this works sure for me on the farm. And uh, I could put this on the strawberry here, so it's a very simple process and gets the job done. Get that bucket out there, finish off, and then I'm going to go here and check to see if it's actually working nicely. And uh, so far, so good. If I have any leaks, I'll come and fix them. But nope, so far, so good. I'm not complaining. Everything's looking nicely and uh so it's a little redneck but it got the job done so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect this real quick. I should probably try to turn off the water but it's alright. Let that run. Try not to get wet here. Disconnect that. Put this back to the side here and connect it back and let it let it flush out the uh let it flush out the nutrients there to the irrigation system. Oh, snap. Nope, that didn't work out too well. There we go. Let that run for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. Put this all the stuff away and uh, that'll be it. So the storms are coming. The wind actually just picked up. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing for the other side. But I want to bring I wanted to bring you guys along here today to show you guys exactly how we irrigate them. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave them down below. But that's a simple process, it's a very simple. And whenever we put in the irrigation system, we bought the, the whole entire kit from Morgan County Seed. It's the, it comes with all the valves, the caps, the couplers, and everything. So it makes our life a whole lot easier because I don't have to worry about none of that. So the storms are coming. I'm going to have to leave the, the irrigation here for another about 10 minutes or so. Let it flush out the nutrients so the clean water can be in the pipes there so all the nutri nutrients can be available to the plants. So that's going to be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Like this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that notification icon because I'm coming to you guys three days a week. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day. And we'll see you next time. No, the rains are coming. We gotta put the farm tools away. No, no more rain. I don't want rain. Gotta close up the high tunnels. Wind's blowing. Close her up, boys. Call her a day.